Hey everyone, welcome back to another amazing tutorial. Today we're going to make this very smooth and nice parallax scroll effect, this smooth parallax effect that goes from top to the bottom of the page and it looks so, so good. Without further ado, let's just get started with this tutorial. Before we begin, make sure to follow me on Instagram for live updates, a lot of cool stuff and a lot of new content as well. So I'm starting this tutorial off with Figma. You can use any other tool you like. You can use Adobe XD as well. So the first step is to actually make a basic artboard. I will go with the MacBook Pro since that is what I own. So MacBook Pro artboard is now here. I will in now insert an image I got from Behance. I would suggest pick an image which has less trees or which is just mountains and hills that will give you more flexibility and it will be easier to trace everything out. So now what we're going to do is use the pen tool to trace certain parts of the mountains and the trees. So first of all, I am going to pick the pen tool in Figma. There is the pen tool on the top here. I can click on it uh, in XD. You can just click on P and select the pen tool. And of course, I will then go ahead and trace these mountains. It doesn't have to be perfect. The best part about this is that it doesn't have to be perfect and you can just basically outline everything without any detailed strokes or anything like that. As you can see, I have already traced this mountain out and what I'm going to do is make sure that the fill is on. So it's filled like this. I'm going to place it behind the image. So I'll just drag it below the image like this. And I'm going to select both the image as well as this vector outline in one go and right click and say use as mask. Make sure you have the copy of the image so that you can just go ahead and place it inside here. Make sure it's outside the mask and not inside it. That looks good. And I'll just place it right here. So you really don't see much of the mask but to my eyes it is visible right here as a mask the same way you need to trace out the second part of the mountain which is closer to you remember in parallax what is closer to you will seem to move faster and what is further away will seem to move slowly so in that sense we will make the mountains which are closer to us move fast and the mountains behind move slow that will give us the parallax effect once you are done tracing out all the elements, the trees and everything like that, make sure that you have two to three layers to give that parallax effect. I will now go ahead and place the text in which says mountains and it will say, say it in two layers. You can make one which is just right here. So what I'll do just for the sake of the tutorial, I'll make it in one line and I'll make sure it's so, so as to reduce the complexity of course of it. And I'll place it right here. Make sure it is white in color. That will look much better on this slightly dark background. And I'll make sure that the text is right below this cutout or right below this mask right here. So now it seems like it's behind these mountains. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on your preference. As you can see, I have cut out the trees and I've put out also a group here, which is just says uh, view image I can then move it around but that was a good position for it I'm gonna paste in another image which is basically the an image of a be a very nice beach with some mountains in the background as well or these hills in the background and the same thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna trace out the water levels here and I'm and it won't take me long because I'm not tra trying to tra trace out with extreme precision. Of course, if you spend more time on the tracing, it'll look a little more detailed and a little more better. But in this case, for the tutorial, I'm not going to showcase how I'm tracing. Just trace it with the pen tool. I'll say use his mask. And as you can see, I've just masked out these rocks and this nice little water here. And I'll place in the image once again, make sure it's behind everything so that it does not kind of uh, jeopardize the whole effect right here. Now, once you've done all the placement of the text and the tracing of the masks, now what I'm going to do is come over to framer.com and framer.com is absolutely free. And as you can see, I've opened it up on my Firefox. So it's web based. Once I've signed up, there is this new tab here. I'll click on this button. And inside this, I will say drafts. Yes, perfect. And I'll say create. Once you have done that, you will be greeted with this nice little screen here. Looks very familiar, looks somewhat similar to Figma and XD. 
Of course, here on the top, you have your name. I'll just change it to Parallax for YouTube or something like that. Now we need to import our designs into Framer. So what I'm gonna do is click on import and I'm gonna click on Figma. Of course, it supports Sketch as well. So in case you made that in Sketch, you can also import that from Sketch. So I'm gonna bring in the Figma file. It's gonna load the screen up and it's gonna ask me for import from Figma. If it asks you to, if it asks you for any permission, make sure to grant that, then you will see this menu pop up. Go back to your Figma file and click on share on the top right. Once you've done that, go ahead and say copy link. That's it. Now go to Framer and inside this, just paste the link here and it'll say loading. And once that is done, it'll show you the page here. So in this case, this is the entire thing is page one, as you can see on the top left here. And I want to do, I want to select page one, perfect. And I want to go and select import. It'll import from Figma as it states here and it's loading right now. As you can see, it took some time to, uh, you know, load, but yes, it brought in all my designs from my Figma file into my design file right here in Framer. Once that is done, I want you guys to do one little step for me. I want you to just drag and select all the things on board, uh, in particular, these three frames, MacBook one, two, and three. Now right click and say, remove frames. You will need to do this in order to create the whole parallax effect. I'll say remove frames. And in this case, everything is now an individual frame except the text. So before we even move on to the first steps of animation, I want you guys to just drag out the text from inside here. It might take a little bit of dragging and just copying and cutting and pasting, but just bring all the text, especially outside before you begin. I have, now I have three blocks of text right here, underwater, sea, and mount. Uh, this could be mountain as well. The next step is to now click on each of these and right click and say, add frame. As you can see now it's just turned white. I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. Right click and say, add frame to each one of these first. Once that is done, select all three of these frames just by dragging out and selecting. And on the right, there is this option called fill. I'll click on this fill option and just deselect this little checkbox here. As you can see, there is now no fill in each of these frames. And as you can see, now they've turned into actual frames, just like that. Now comes the fun animation part. So I'll just click on insert right here. And I will now insert a frame right here. I'll click on frames. And from here, I'll just select any frame or I'll select the frame that I chose before, which was a MacBook Pro. Mm, let's, let's search for MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro. Here you go. MacBook Pro is here and I'll just click on insert right here. And as you can see, we now have a blank template right here. What I will do is now make this blank template really tall. Just make it really, really tall. Make it like a long page, just like this. Now go to insert again, and you will need to do one little step. Go to public packages right here at the bottom, the yellow colored icon, and search on the top right here and search for parallax. Parallax is what you need to search. Once it searches, you get the first result which says parallax scroll effects. And you'll see an image like this. I want you to go ahead and install this. It will take a few seconds to install it into your framer, but that's about it. It's basically a very strong and useful plugin for Framer and it installs on the spot. Awesome, once that is done, just go back to home by clicking on this little home icon on the top left. And I want you guys to select this installed package Parallax. If you don't find it here, just search it from this top bar here by clicking on Parallax. Just search Parallax. Here you will get two different components. Parallax layer and parallax scroll. So for this one, I want to insert a parallax layer. I'll click on this parallax layer and it just places this small block right here. I'll drag it to the top left of this right here and just place it perfectly. Perfect. 
and I'll make sure that the width is 100% of this artboard right here or this frame in this case. And the height is about 900 since that is the height of the MacBook Pro artboard. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, click here and just drag everything out. As you can see, individual masks that we had done in Figma are now being dragged out of this. And I'll just separate, place everything separately away from each other. Make sure they're not a part of one another. And that's about it. This background is there. This, these little, uh, this little uh, foothill is there. And I'll make sure that I just place it maybe one on top of the other. It, it's not necessary. You can place it anywhere on this whole area. Once that is done, what you need to do is first click on this little uh, plugin here, which is the purple looking plugin. And I'll just drag this circle, this right circle here, and I'll drag it over to this first layer, which is the topmost layer of the trees. I'll, I'll select this. And as you can see, the trees that we had cut out earlier are placed here as an individual element. You can then resize it as you wish but make sure that it fits the entire artboard like this. Awesome. To save time, what I'm gonna do is click on this area here again and say Command D or Control D. What that will do is just duplicate the layers. So now we have two layers just like this. And what I'm gonna do is hold this white circle on the right here and connect it with this foothill here. And that's about it. As you can see, we now see a foothill in the place of that other trees right there. So what I'm gonna do is drag from the bottom here so that you know there's just about the height of this foothill. And I'll place it right about here. And this is a very fun thing because it seems like a little puzzle to me almost. And make sure that it fits this like a cookie cutter does. So I'm just gonna skip this portion. All you need to do is duplicate these layers just place it outside if you like. And on the right, there's this little white circle. Just drag it to the element that you want to move in the parallax effect. If there is an element which doesn't need to move or may, just needs to be stagnant while scrolling, do not put it into this layer, just copy and paste. Now guys, all right guys, now what I'm gonna do is select the topmost layer, which is this uh, these main trees which are right in front of us here. Just place it like that. Make sure it's a parallax layer on the left here. On the right, you will get some properties like this. And as you can see, it has some property values here. Make sure depends is set to Y. Property is set to Y. And as you can see, I can, I can basically select opacity scale this means that when I scroll, the Y axis or opacity or the scale of that element will change as I scroll. So I'll just click on Y because I want it to shift down the Y axis to the bottom. Apart from that, I don't want you guys to change the scroll min. Let's just keep it at zero. Scroll max should basically be around 300 in this case. And Y max can be around 550. Now the bigger the difference, now, the bigger the difference between scroll and Y max, the more, the less it will seem to move. And the more the difference, the more it will seem to move or the faster it will move. And that was more or less about it. I will then keep on selecting each parallax layer. So next I'm selecting this foothill that I had placed right here. And I'm gonna give it similar values. Y depends. Y property again, scroll min zero, scroll max. Now in this case, I will give something similar, something like 800, but I will increase the value. So there's less difference now. So I'll give it maybe 550 so that these foothills are moving slower as compared to the trees in the front. Similarly, I'm gonna select the text here, give it the, and in this case, I want it to fade away. So rather than saying, property rotate, I'm going to say property opacity and scroll max will be more or less the same. In this case, maybe I want to give it something like 600. Opacity min should be the initial opacity in this case is 100 or 1 and opacity max should be the last opacity. That means zero. That means it should fade away when we are scrolling down. Now to actually see this in action, what I'm gonna do is click on insert again, 
and, and search for parallax once again. You will get this parallax scroll right here. And I'll click on this and I'll say insert. Make sure that it's selected here and I'm just put it right next to this. Make sure the size of this is the same as the viewport size here. So in this case, 1440 by 900. That was our original MacBook size. Perfect. What I'm going to do is just drag it, drag the right cursor from here to this first artboard, which is the scroll layers artboard. And there you go. This is now the original viewport. I'll click on this. And on the top right, I have this play button, which is basically the preview button. I'll click on this and I'll get a small preview right here. Now, basically with all that tweaking and fixing, you will have something like this at the end. However, you will have to do a lot of trial and error. You will have to increase the value and decrease the value. Sometimes make the values the same to basically change the speed of each element right here to make it look more and more perfect. Of course, you will not have it perfect in one go. The values are more experimental than anything else. I hope you liked that tutorial. If you did, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I post every Monday and Thursday. Go and also click on that thumbs up button to support the video. See you guys next time. God bless.